This page of your notes is about the bacterial cell wall. So um, bacteria have um, what's known as a peptidoglycan cell wall. Uh, and we're going to use a purple pen, just kind of highlight out here, or outline here. And this is uh, the peptidoglycan layer. That means it has sugar, oops, sorry, protein and sugar connections in this cell wall and gram-positive bacteria tend to have many layers of this and in general gram-negative tend to have fewer. So when you think about this right here being um, part of the cell wall, then imagine that in here is the cell membrane. So the cell membrane here, which means the cytoplasm would be here and then all the other structures of the cell. So we're working our way from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. Okay, so first let's take a look at these nags and nams. Go ahead and use a yellow highlighter on the nags and the nams, and I'll tell you what that stands for in just a second. Okay, so what these are are um, sugars in the cell wall, and uh, the N stands for uh, nitrogen, so N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid, N-acetylglucosamine, N-acetylmuramic acid. So these are actually sugars and they're linked together. And so in this, you know, very schematic picture, you can see that there are three layers in the peptidoglycan wall. Uh, there might be as many as 30 in a gram-positive bacterial um, cell wall and then far fewer than that in gram-negative. It really just depends. Um, so let's go ahead and use a black pen to label this. These are the interlocking sugars, the nags and the nams. So that's the glycan part. And this would be of one layer. And then what holds the layers together are protein crosslinks. So take a blue highlighter and connect those layers together. These are usually just a short chain of amino acids, maybe four or six amino acids long. Then use your blue pen to label these as the protein crosslink. So that's the peptido part. And uh, our body has a way of breaking these interlocking sugars in all of our bodily secretions with lysozyme. So I'm going to use green here, and we're going to point an arrow at the connection between a couple of sugars. And lysozyme, which is present in our saliva as well as our sweat and our tears, And this is one of the ways that we can prevent um, bacterial infections. And then keeping use of your green pen, uh, penicillin and many other antibiotics that act um, in a similar manner block the formation of the protein cro crosslinks. And that's going to stop the bacteria from being able to grow very effectively. Penicillin tends to be more effective against gram-positive bacteria. Uh, that's because gram-negative bacteria, as you'll see later, have an outer lipid um, membrane. We'll talk about that later. So then use your green highlighter to point out these two ways of really damaging the cell membrane or sorry, cell wall.
Okay, so next we're going to look at the outer lipid membrane of only gram negative. So um, we'll use the purple again, because we're talking kind of about another layer here. This is called the lipopolysaccharide. Actually, this part is, oops. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, is and this this whole thing though, sorry about that, I is the outer lipid membrane. So for gram negative bacteria, they have a lipid cell membrane, so it'd be like the inner lipid membrane in a way. Then they have peptidoglycan, then they have an outer lipid membrane. And this outer lipid membrane, we can is like a typical lipid membrane with the hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails pointing in. But one thing that's really unique about it and special to gram negative is that it has something called the LPS or lipid polysaccharide. I kind of got ahead of myself. Um, we're going to highlight that in bright pink. And it has two parts to it. Lipid A is the part that is most inner, right here. And it's what we call an endotoxin because it's part of the bacterial cell wall. And the reason, so that's the endo part. And we call it a toxin because it's highly stimulating to our immune system. And that can be good within measure, but it can be bad if it's overstimulating to our immune system. And then an endotoxin could actually cause someone to go into um, septic shock. And then this outer part is called the O polysaccharide part of it. So you can tell it's got sugars in it when you see that saccharide and O is just the name for a particular this particular antigen and this O polysaccharide is um, critical in identification of different bacteria I should say in identifying some bacteria uh, for example E. coli 0157H7, part of its name, do you see the O right there? It means it's the 157th strain of E. coli. So in other words, there are many, many different forms of this with the O polysaccharide. Okay, then we're not even done yet because most bacteria that are able to cause disease also have a capsule or it's usually just called a glycocalyx, um, which means a sugar coat. And sure enough, this is made primarily out of carbohydrate. So its generic term is called a glycocalyx. Most bacteria that cause disease have one and it's we'll learn more about this later but it's usually helpful in a bacteria avoiding phagocytosis um, or it might help a bacteria adhere to our body surfaces either way in many cases if a bacteria lacks the capsule it's not going to be very virulent meaning it's unlikely to cause disease Okay, and then um, just down to the bottom here, I want to give you, we're sort of gonna, we've looked at some trees in the forest, and now I want to back up and look at the whole forest so you see the big picture. Um, the cell membrane was the first thing that we looked at in the very in, inner part. I'm making it wiggly on purpose just to remind you that it's made of lipids, not because it necessarily would be that, that wiggly in a real bacterial cell. So we've got the cell membrane. 
and then outside of that you have uh, the peptidoglycan and I guess that we could do that in yellow and then only in the case of gram-negative um, I guess I used purple again didn't I there is or we could use pink because it's got that lipid A the endotoxin in it so then it's another maybe add some wiggles to that to remind you that this is a lipid layer as well oh I guess I didn't label that so sorry the yellow is the peptidoglycan layers And then in purple, or sorry, pink, is the outer lipid membrane of gram-negative. And then, last but not least, most medically significant bacteria that cause disease have some kind of a capsule or a glycocalyx that helps it to... Um, adhere glycocalyx and it's made of carbohydrates primarily so if you think about it they have lipids and then uh, carbohydrates and proteins and then lipids and then carbohydrates again